My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, we had just gotten Chrisnik and Shellcal down to Kerbin's surface to finish off a couple of rescue contracts, and that left us just a couple of hundred thousand curb bucks shy of being able to start the upgrading process of the Research and Development Center. So let's get ourselves over to Mission Control and see what new missions have come for us. Okay. Ooh, what's this? Conduct seismic surveys of Minmus near a specific mm -hmm. site. Got three waypoints here. Three places to go. Seismic scans. Now, a few episodes ago, I actually did one of these. Uh, Minmus 1 is actually currently sitting on the surface of Minmus. I wonder if I could shuffle Minmus 1 over. Yeah. What's the other one here? The other one is, uh, oh, just putting a satellite in orbit around the moon. Well, that'll be trivial enough. I can see it's a retrograde orbit, but when you're putting it in around another body, that doesn't make any difference. So that'll be easy enough. Yeah, you know, you know, these are both going to be easy. And I think I should be able to bring them quickly. So I'm going to grab both of these. But what I'm really interested in is getting myself out to Minmus and seeing if Minmus 1 might be able to bang off this contract all on its own. So here we are on the tracking station. I just want to check this out first. Unfortunately, I got one of my communication satellites selected. Let's get over to Minmus. There we go. Okay, so let's check out what the situation is. So there are our waypoints. That's where we need to get to. And Minmus 1 is right down there. Yeah, pretty much the opposite side of the planet. Well, let's get out to it and see what we got. Okay, so the situation is, let's see, according to Kerbal Engineer, this thing currently has 849 meters per second still left in it. That really should be plenty. I mean, to get to orbit and to descend again takes about 200 meters per second each way with Minmus, a little less than that, actually. No, this this is completely doable. Let, let's get going, then. Okay, and we'll pitch over to 45 degrees. And I just want to get my apoapsis up and around 10 kilometers, and then I'll think about adjusting my trajectory after that. Now, uh, the heading from the waypoint manager says 89 degrees, which is just about east, which makes no sense to me. Oh, so I burned more north. <laughs> I can see now I burned. Yeah, that trajectory is not exactly going to where I need it to go. So uh, yeah, I'm going to have to set myself up a node here. That will do a couple of things. One is put me into an orbit, but the other is to adjust my trajectory uh, towards where the waypoint is. Yeah, I should have burned more east than I did. Oh, uh, but that's okay. I got a lot of fuel. Should be all right. So let's see. We'll play this way with it. Ah, we'll play with this for a little bit. This ended up being about a 133 meter per second burn, mostly because of the uh, plane change I had to make. But it is what it is. So let's time warp out to Apoapsis and perform the burn. Okay, there we go. Still looking at the Delta V. I think I'm still okay. Let's see, what, what are we going to have left when this is all done? Okay, that's that. Still 608 meters per second left. Like I said, a descent's only around 200. So, uh, should be plenty. Should be able to do this easily. Let's take a look at my trajectory. Yes, looking good. Okay, and so while we make our way over there and while we... Uh, Perform this descent. Why don't we talk a bit about what's going to be coming up in this particular episode? Well, obviously, I am very, very interested in the starting the process of upgrading the research and development center and uh, making a bit of money so I can do that. And that's what this, of course, is all about. And I guess the other thing that's going to come out of this is doing surface science. Uh, I guess I'm doing some surface science here, but specifically, what I'm looking at is a mod called the Surface Experiment Pack. Uh, which gives your Kerbals some more things to do on the surface of foreign worlds other than just simply, you know, doing a surface sample and all that kind of stuff. And it works with KIS. I think it's really, really cool. And I'm very, very eager to start playing with it. But in the meantime, you can see here, we are just about to touch down at our first waypoint. Okay, and there we go. We are down, turn off the SAS, a bit of a slope, but whoa, 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 wants to fall over, let's nudge that back, uh, maybe we'll keep that SAS on, okay, 
Seismic scan time. Log seismic data. Boom. Okay, one-third of the contract done. Yeah, not much science here. Where are we? We're in the slopes. Yeah, you might recall that uh, Bob, when he was down on the surface, was pretty thorough at doing some hopping about and getting a lot of different biomes. But, uh, okay, let's head over to one of our other waypoints over there. And in fact, since you've seen this all before, um, I'm just going to cut to my final uh, descent, to my final waypoint here, and, and, and just kind of cut to the chase. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is... Hasn't this little probe just been awesome? I, I want to point out the fact that uh, this thing was dropped off by the space shuttle uh, in low carbon orbit, exactly the way you see it here. There's been no staging since it's uh, since it was put into low carbon orbit, so it's it's transfer burn out to here. All of these descents and hops that it's been doing has all been done with these this little tiny probe. And I know in Kerbal Space Program, uh, we all love building big things, but uh, there is some power in the small and the mighty, and I think this guy proves it. Okay, so now with that done, let's pop back to the Kerbal Space Center and see what we got. Okay, so that is 2.68 million, and I need... 5, 2.535 million, so I got enough, but not by much. Let's check out mission control. Oh, there's two contracts here now. Oh, that increasing reputation is paying off. Fly by Duna? I already have a probe on its way to Duna. So this will suffice here. I'm going to grab this one, and the other one is to collect some science from space around Minmus. Easy peasy. Yeah, definitely grab that one as well. And with the monies that was forwarded to me from that, I now have 2.81 million. Uh, yeah, that's almost 300,000 uh, curb bucks extra. Let's do this thing. There we go. Now, this is going to take a bit of time. Uh, it's going to take 17 days to complete the upgrade. But uh, when that is done, uh, I am going. To, I have the entire tech tree unlocked. It's full steam ahead. Okay, so with all that accomplished, let's get out to Kerbin Station because the crew of the Karayan... Well, they got some cleaning up to do. See, I got this contract to uh, clean up some debris that's in low carbon orbit. I don't know much about this debris other than it's uh, about two meters across and about five meters long. So what we need to do is actually not blow it up, which is what you normally see me do with debris. Got to get it down safely to carbon surface. So for now, my only plan is to get it actually over to the space station. So we're going to send out the Karayan to go get it. Now... It is, uh, it is for sure going to have no kind of uh, attachment systems on it. So what I'm getting Bill to do here is grab one of these uh, KIS storage containers. Inside that storage container, I have a docking port. And we're going to just attach the storage container to the Karayan here. And we're going to take this out with us uh, so that we can put that... Uh, docking port onto uh, whatever this thing is so we can link up with it. And Bill also has himself, oh, some lights and things. We want to make the Korion light up a little bit better than it is right now. But uh, once with that accomplished, what we'll do is we'll just we'll just burn on out of here. And like, for goodness sakes, you have certainly seen me doing enough low orbit rendezvous. So we're just going to cut to the chase and get out to this thing. Oh, and we can see now that uh, it's actually a homegrown rocket's uh, fuel tank. One of their bigger fuel tanks, a 1.875 meter fuel tank. Unfortunately, it's empty. Uh, <laughs> it would have been nice if it wasn't empty. But uh, either way, what we're going to do, we're just going to send Bill out. And uh, he's going to hook on that docking port that we brought along. Which uh, turned out to be a little bit... Finicky, it turned out uh, with an upgrade with uh, Kerbal Inventory System that you can no longer grab parts that are in the container that is attached to the Kerbal. You have to drop the container and then pull the parts out. But once I figured that part out, that wasn't an issue. Docking port goes on to uh, the fuel tank. Bill, of course, comes back. Uh, we dock with it. And then we get ourselves out of here. And in a short order, we were back at the station once again. Where, of course, we had to do some more docking port appropriation in order to be able to dock this thing, get a docking port on the other end. You do got to love Kerbal Inventory System and Kerbal Attachment System. But anyway, once that was done, we docked these two things together. I guess uh, I'm going to still have to get it down to the surface. I'll have to 
probably just send up some sort of a, a probe that can hook onto it, put some parachutes on this thing, do a descent burn. It should be easy enough. But anyway, that's going to have to obviously be for a future episode. I actually have a launch to get to. Now, this actually has more to do with something that's coming up in a future episode than right now. This is preparing for a future mission. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time with it, but I do want to explain it. This is the Kegel 2. Uh, you might recall that the Kegel 1 was my one-person lander that I used to land my first Kerbals on the moon and onto Memnus. Uh, this is not a one-person lander. And it's not a two-person lander. This is a five-person lander. Um, the reason why I went this way is because I do have a contract to put a base on the moon. And a base doesn't really literally mean a base. It just has to be something that can hold, hold up to five Kerbals. And this can hold up to five Kerbals. Uh, so it's going to fulfill that put a base on the, um, uh, on the moon contract. It's going to allow me to put a bunch of Kerbals onto the surface of the moon. And uh, get some experience into them. Uh, and I think this is going to be the next mission for the Korion 2 once I get a few other things in place. It does have some bearing on what's coming up next because this thing is loaded up with the surface experiment pack science that I was talking about a little bit earlier in the video. And the very next mission after this one is me doing some, some experimentation with it on Kerbin's surface so I can get a feel for it before we're doing it on the moon. Uh, one kind of unfortunate thing, though, is I got so fixated on putting in this new surface experiment science stuff, I completely forgot to put in the stock conventional science stuff on this thing. This thing doesn't have uh, uh, thermometers or seismic scanners or goo canisters or any of that kind of stuff. That was really dumb on my part. But the Korion 1, which we will be visiting very, very shortly, is very close to getting back to Kerbin. It has a science package attached to it with a docking port. I just need to transfer that science package over to the Korion 2, and this thing will be all scienced up. Right now, we're just performing our lunar injection burn. Unlike the Kegel 1, which had the Korion take it out to the moon into Minmus, this thing's pretty big, so instead it's going to get itself out there. So it's going to get itself out to the moon. We're going to put it into a polar orbit about the moon, and then once the Korion is all set to get out there, it's going to go out there and rendezvous with it, and then we're going to do our landing. But that is going to have to be for a future episode. Right now I want to get to what I really do want to get to and start playing with this surface experiment pack. What you see here is the newest iteration of my science buggy. It started out small, but it just keeps getting bigger. And I'm calling this the Model K2. Uh, and it's packed with all sorts of goodies to go around and collect science from surface uh, in and around the Kerbal Space Center. And I've actually had this thing built for quite some time, but I haven't been able to use it yet because it requires an engineer. And finally, I got Chris Nick. Chris Nick, my engineer, and he's going to show you how this surface experiment stuff works now uh, oh shoot he needs a tool okay well we'll pick it up I do have a KAS container here and so we're gonna pick up some stuff and inside here you will see all this surface experiment stuff but let's get them down the surface we'll get it all there um, yeah sort of egress is a little unconventional <laughs> his ladder and he's got to go down now he's got to drop and Oh, ouch. Okay, okay, okay. Don't drop them so far. All right, let's get over to that container. So we got ourselves uh, all of our surface science gizmos here. But the first thing I am going to need is a tool. So we'll grab ourselves. I got the wrench. And uh, this is, yeah, I'll show all this stuff in a little bit. But anyway, let's start setting this stuff up. All righty, this looks like a good place. And like I said, this is just a dry run. I just want to see how this goes. Work out any kinks before I'm on the surface of the moon. So this is our central station. This is the, the heart, the brains of this whole thing that we're going to attach all of our experiments to. And then we're going to have to power it up and it's powered by solar. So it has this, this tower that I've also got to hook onto there. But this turns out to be a little bit more challenging than I thought. It's supposed to go on this little base here, but uh, 
and pushing R doesn't seem to get it to work in node mode. That's what I should be doing is holding R and then it's supposed to connect. So I ended up bailing on that and just kind of seeing if I could stick it on to the top. Okay, that sounded good. That sounded good. Okay, now let's power it. We power it with these little these solar panels that come with it. All of these are parts that come with the mod. There we go. That looks pretty good. I got four of these all told, so uh, I don't really know how many it takes to power this up. So let's stick on another one. And only an engineer can do this because you do need a tool to do this. Oh, oh, done like that. There we go. And uh, let's try extending these. It's a really nice little animation that comes with the extending. There we go. Look at that. And looking at it now, although it looks good, I can see it's completely pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> My solar panel is pointing towards the east and the sun is on the west. So let's move them over to the other side here. Okay, that worked. Oh, oh, oh dear. Okay, I uh, must have forgot to push H. If I can grab this, uh, shoot, it seems to be glitched into control center here. Maybe if I move the control center or the control station, put it now I can grab this thing. Come on, air. Oh, uh oh. And okay. Oh, Chris Nick didn't like that. Oh well, now I got three solar panels. Hopefully three should be enough. So let's put some on the other side. And it turned out that this was just a sign of things to come. Where I really started to run into troubles when I was trying to put in these plugs. Uh, which I would love to explain, but I can't seem to get them to connect. And after quite a bit of frustration and uh, another explosion, um, I ended up finally going over to the forums for this particular mod and found out that the update that came out for KIS has somehow messed up this mod. And now these parts don't seem to work. They don't want to connect into... Um, that node mode, the little screwdriver that comes with it that you need to connect these plugs, they don't work. Uh, apparently if I roll back KIS it will work, but what I decided to do instead was to pack this up and rebuild it, and I'll come back to it later in this video. I'll roll back KIS to its previous version. On the forums it says that this should work out fine, we'll see how it goes, but in the meantime, just got a few other things very quick things to get to. Here we got Val and Bob in the Otter 3. You've seen the Otter 3 lots of times before, but this time I'm using it much better. You can see I've got the uh, afterburners going and we're thrusting straight up. Uh, if you start these things lower in the atmosphere, they certainly are far more efficient at getting you up, as you can see. And what I'm doing is just getting it till my apoapsis is well above 18 kilometers. And the reason for that is I noticed the last time that I used the atmospheric sensor to do a high atmospheric scan that that those scans are biome specific I did not know that so that means I could be getting high atmospheric scans over all the various different biomes so right here we are directly above the KSC there we go so that one is above the shores. I also want to get the grasslands. I already got the highlands. That's the one that I noticed was above a biome. Uh, I want to get the mountains and I want to get the deserts uh, because those are all biomes that are very, very close by. But before I can do that, uh, I need to get that particular scan out of the scanner, that science out of the scanner um, and uh, free it up to be able to do another scan. And that's why I got Bob here along. Uh, but unfortunately, Bob is not about to get out of the plane right now. So what we're going to do is we've got to get ourselves back down. So we're going to go down to the runway. We're going to get uh, Bob out. He's going to collect that science. Then we're going to get up, and we're going to repeat this over the grasslands, and yada, 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 you get the idea. And the last one I was going for was the deserts. Uh, so at this point, I'd already picked up the scan over the mountains, and I'm going to land in the desert. I'm going to take the uh, temperature... Uh, the science out of the scanner once again so I can collect the one above the desert and oh geez oh I just hit G oh no uh. okay okay oh okay they're all right oh 
dear. I'm not exactly uh, impressing you with my prowess this episode, am I? In case you didn't figure that out, I hit G when I meant to hit B for brakes and descended the landing gear while we were still moving. Smooth. Oh, well. All the science is still good. I just got to come back for the science over the desert. And that brings us to... What has become a bit of an unfamiliar sight? You didn't forget about these guys, did you? Here we have Jeb and Chrissy and Glafia. Finally back in near space around Kerbin. It was 40 days ago that they left Kerbin Station for their leisurely journey out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Next time, I am definitely going to make this go faster. But we are being we are preparing now for our first arrow breaking maneuver. You've seen lots of arrow breakings before. I'm not going to go into the whole whys of arrow breaking other than to say, well, it's not like this went without incident. Now that was not entirely unexpected. Um, when the Korion 2 was doing its arrow breaking, its solar panels, the same type of uh, homegrown rocket solar panels, blew up in pretty much the exact same place in the exact same way. They blew up super easily. I mean, uh, I don't know, something has changed that's causing these things to blow up. I'm not exactly sure what, but I was sort of anticipating it because uh, I actually have a new set of solar panels, a different set of solar panels coming up already being built in a future Kuryu's mission. So I already kind of knew this was going to happen and I was preparing for it, but what I was not prepared for was this. Oh crap. Reaction wheel failure. A set of reaction wheels have failed and I can see that it is the main reaction wheels that I have right in the center of the vehicle, not the ones that are in the command capsule. Ooh, shoot, um, that's a bit of an issue because, um, yeah, those ones are working fine, but and those ones don't have, that capsule doesn't even have reaction wheels, but uh, that's a bit of an issue because uh, that would put it down to just the weak reaction wheels that are left in the uh, command capsule, and if those go, then I have no, well, I still have RCS for attitude control, and I sent out Glafia just to check, but... She's only a level 1 engineer, and I need to be a level 2 engineer in order to fix these things. So she can't fix them. Um, thing is, she will be a level 2 engineer once I put her down to the surface and get her back up again, as will Bartner. So I'm going to just... It's not that big a deal because I still do have the reaction control system that is... Or the reaction control wheels that are in the one command capsule. And I still do have RCS for attitude control. A lot of monoprop as well. So we'll hobble this thing over to the Karayan station, and then I'll get my engineers down to the surface and get one of them back up here, and they will fix this thing right up. Um, but that's going to have to be for the next episode. I do got one more quick thing to show you, and then we're going to get back to the Model K2. I do like to show you all of my missions, even if I'm only going to spend a minute with it. And this is all I'm going to spend with this one is about a minute. Um, this is map sat 4. Uh, I've got three map sats, one around Kerbin, one around Minmus, and one around the moon. And uh, I want to pump out some more. I was waiting for an actual contract to put more mapping satellites out there. And I finally got fed up and just built one and sent it on its way anyway. And this would go to the moon or go to Minmus. Actually, I could put it around Kerbin as well. But uh, I decided to send it off to Minmus, and the reason why it's going to Minmus is I did have a little picked up a little bit earlier a uh, get some science, return some science from Minmus, and so this will fit the bill there. And on it, it has the ScanSat multispectral analyzer, which I have unlocked forever, and it also has the stock resource scanner on it as well. And it's that resource scanner is why it's being put up on its own little launcher because a little uh, medium-sized launcher, <laughs> but not in the space shuttle because it's too big to fit in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. I really need to uh, unlock some bigger space shuttle parts so I can put some bigger things into space. Anyway, this is just going on its way to Minmus. It's going to go into a polar orbit. Oh, you've seen all that before. So uh, let's get back to the Model K2 and this surface science experiment pack. So we got Chris Nick again, remember? Only engineer. Okay, that worked. Good stuff. Now, that worked last time, too. I've also gone with the electric screwdriver rather than the wrench. Better tools. Okay, R. Yes! That's it. 
and H and attach. There we go. Okay, that's the way that's supposed to look. Oh, wait, it fell through. I must have missed the H. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's just put it back. Okay, R, there. H, yeah. You gotta hear that little click. You hear that little click? That's what tells you that you got it right. All right, that worked. And sticking on the solar panels as well worked with uh, without any issues. But what was the bigger issue last time? We're not uh, the solar panels. Uh, the tower was a bit of an issue, but was also an issue were these little plug pieces. Um, so right here, I'm equipped with the screwdriver because this is the screwdriver that comes with the mod that you're supposed to use. It's a special tool just for these stupid little plugs. Um, and I'm trying to click it in, and you can see that it's telling me that I need a tool to attach this part. And I have a tool, I have the screwdriver, but it clearly is not working even though this tool is supposed to be the purpose-built tool for this. At least I think that's the way it's supposed to work. Well, screw it, screw it. Let's put away the manual screwdriver. I have an electric screwdriver, let's try it with this. Okay, let's try this again. There, and RH. Come on, <gasps> that was a happy sound. Oh my god, it's there? It's there. Okay, forget manuals. It's electric. We just need the better tool. I don't think this is the way it's supposed to work, but I don't care. Okay, R for the node and H. There we go. Okay, now it's link. This is very much like those KAS pipes. Link. And there. Link back to here. Oh my god, it worked! Now the idea of this obviously is just a plug. It powers that uh, middle thing. That middle thing is just like a relay station to relay out to your experiments. So let's go get those experiments. Okay, there goes our last plug. Let's link these all together. So I got four experiments here all together. And I'm noticing just now that there are actually four plugs in that uh, central station so I actually didn't need this sort of relay hub here but uh, it's good to see how it works anyway and with that all done it's time to get Bob out here okay so let's visit all four of these experiments so first is the interior heat probe oh I'm inspecting why am I inspecting yes this is as good as new of course it is okay let's make a measurement here and 2.2 science. Okay, scoop that up. Next, this guy here is a weather station. Okay, let's make weather measurements. So it says it's observing the weather up there. And it's taking a little while. By the way, there are more experiments than just these four, but these are the only four that work in an atmosphere. There are some that only work in a vacuum. Oh, there we go, 8.6 science. We'll scoop that up. So there's different combinations of experiments depending upon whether you're on a body with a with an atmosphere or whether you're on a body without an atmosphere. Oh wait a second, I only have one. I only have the weather station. Did I? Oh, I got to collect the science from here. Okay, there we go. Now, now that now he should have two. Yes, he has two sciences now. Okay, good. Let's go check the other ones out. And one thing to be noticing, by the way, while I'm collecting these, is all of these are runway science. Oh, I've already run this one, so I just need to collect it. Okay. And that, by the way, was the passive uh, seismic experiment. And this is a retro reflector. And I suppose they're going retro because the Apollo astronauts put something very similar to this on the moon to help measure uh, distances to the moon very very accurately so there we go we got all of our science and all of that by the way was um, do, 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 do runway science which means I can repeat this in all of the biomes in around the KSC of which there's tons this could turn into quite a lot of science but I'm not going to be doing that now instead what I'm going to be doing now is bringing this episode to its conclusion I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.